A number of years ago, while exploring up in the Natch, I came across an old cellar hole and evidence that someone had lived there at one time at the north end of the Natch. There was also a rather odd ditch or stream bed between that and the road, but no water or water source. Today we are going to go take another look at that place. I drove up Chestnut Hill Road and through Pumpkin Hook and am now turning left into the north end of Nash Lane. I apologize for the dash cam photos. The sun is really bright and I didn't realize there was so much dashboard reflection. I tried to trim the worst out. I'll have to fix that before making another video. shape. The worst I have seen it since the state took it over. I'm glad this vehicle has all-wheel drive and weighs two tons. When I was young it followed a different course up the hill here, crossing the stream I caught in a couple of huge rock slabs further downhill from where I turned in, and then going straight up the hill. It was only two tracks through the woods back then. My dad drove us over it in the 47 Willys Jeep. I was just a kid but it was quite an adventure. is off to the right in this area but I have to drive up a ways to find a place to park and then walk back. I tried looking at maps to determine when the house was built but it does not appear on the 1853 Pearsall Smith map nor on the 1866 Beers Atlas map. The first map it does appear on is the 1895 USGS topographical map. It stays on the top of maps until about 1954 but I am certain it was gone long before then. However, we can pin down the date it was built to the 29 year period between 1866 and 1895.
I used to think that there was a bridge here crossing to the farm, but now I believe this was a dam which backed up water into a pond. The road in seems to have run up the far bank from further south. Quite a lot of water in here this year. We have had a lot of rain. Usually it is dry before August. Here we are at the cellar hole of the house. I didn't have anything to measure with on me, so I paced it out. Lucy wanted to help, but she wouldn't have been much of a help. It seemed to be about 40 feet long by 20 feet wide, with a 10-foot porch added onto the north end. Here are two still photos of the house foundation with an outline drawn in on it so you can see exactly where the edges are. a door latch I picked up at the porch or north end and a piece of window glass from the other end. The glass is factory made so it isn't terribly old. The type of latch and glass suggests this building was used as a storage shed in its later life. There was a piece of metal peeking out from the vegetation here in the house foundation but I didn't go in after it. The camera doesn't show it up well. It was out behind the house foundation in the back, back country a little ways and found a rectangle of different colored vegetation. At first I thought maybe there had been a shed or something here, but there was no evidence of it. It's possible it was just a garden spot and the soil is different, so the vegetation is a little different colored. near the house is the old barn foundation. I didn't pace it out but it wasn't too large. There is a piece of metal showing up here in the last photo. Where you see the arrow flash on the screen, there's a um, that's where the road used to go when I was young, up over and straight down the hill there. If you look at the sides along here, you will see the cut where the water from up by the farmhouse drains across the road. That may have been cut out some on the right when they built this road in the 1960s, but I really wonder if that whole thing wasn't the course of the original Native American trail to Pumpkin Hook, later made into a road by the early settlers. Some of those trails eroded four feet or more deep over the years, 
and it would have been moved later to find a better course. to the notch and head on to our next adventure.